All right, pretty exciting news, people. DeepMind's model, new AI, can solve competitive programming, and、uh, it can achieve like fifty percent of the level of participants of the, those competitive programming、uh, competitions. So that's a pretty intense thing, because those participants are already top programmers. And the, the AI, DeepMind's AI, can kind of、uh, do the average among those competitors. So it's pretty pretty good. If you lay this AI to do like legal interview, right body interviews for Google or Facebook, you will probably pass pretty easily because those people who can achieve average level in those competitions usually are very good coder in terms of competitive programming. Okay.、Um, So let's just look at these things.、Um, we 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 can just go up and see、uh, the title: competitive programming with alpha code. Yes,、yeah, so it's alpha code. This AI is alpha code.、Uh, as you know, they are usually named they name the AI as、uh, prefix alpha, alpha go, alpha go zero, alpha zero,、uh, alpha fold,、uh, and so on. Okay, so solving problems and getting and setting a new milestone in competitive programming. Indeed, indeed, it's really, really, really like breakthrough. It's a breakthrough.、Um, so、uh, creating solutions to unseen, unforeseen problems is a second nature in human intelligence. So they basically want to prove an AI also has certain level of、uh, intelligence.、Uh, Maybe pretty low level one. You can say that's not intelligence. I'm not gonna argue with you, but they, what they want to prove is they want to gradually proving、uh, they their AI can do certain things. They sounds intelligent. Okay, so competitive programming is definitely one milestone, and other things like playing Go, playing Dota, are definitely are、uh, also similar things. Okay, so it's as part of、uh, DeepMind's vision. Uh, to solve intelligence, yeah. So basically, they want to create intelligence, right? Artificial general intelligence, and this system is called Al AlphaFold. And、uh, they Alpha AlphaCode AlphaCode achieve an estimated rank within the top forty five percent of participants in programming、uh, competitions by solving new problems. They require a combination of critical thinking, logic, algorithms, coding, and natural language understanding. So it's not only you need to understand the description of the code,、uh, of the problems. You also need to understand how to code, what kind of、uh, grammar of this language is, also what kind of algorithms you can use, also a logic. Importantly, critical thinking. It, it basically AI needs to th maybe think something. You, yeah, it's just a. Intuitively, you will say、uh, a person who can solve these competitive programming problems are intelligent, right? Now the AI can solve it.、Um, I don't think you can say this alpha code is not intelligent. I will say it's maybe not as intelligent as humans. Of course, it's the kind of expert, but it's an expert in solving this kind of problem. I'm not. I'm not saying this alpha co understand coding. Probably not. Probably it's like statistics, but maybe humans also solving these kind of problems. We most of like statistical thinking, right? So there are a lot of things that you can argue. But I want to present you this paper. It's super cool, super cool. So it, it uses a transformer based language models,、uh, which is not surprising because you use you need to understand、uh, pretty the language, right? So the most intuitive way is、uh, you build a transformer. Uh, encoder, decoder, and encoder to encode the problems, and the decoder to generate code. And what you should do is you should pre-train the decoder. You should do self-supervised -super learning, uh, self-supervision on the GitHub code. So you lay this decoder see as much code as possible, which is you input the code, and then you mask certain tokens in the code, and then the decoder needs to predict. Which tokens it should be. So what I mean by that is,、uh, okay. So what I mean by that is, they say you have a, a snippet of code, right? For i in、um, 
list a a print i right then this is a snippet of a call then you kind of mask certain tokens let's say you mask i just like what you do in the language model pre-training then the model need to predict these tokens by doing that by train pre-training your encode decoder your decoder will be very familiar familiar with the code so you will generate very fluent bug free code uh, much easier and uh, your encoder is you also need to pre-train on language natural languages so maybe you want to pre-train on um, wikipedia google book corpus so now you have encoder to understand natural languages you have decoder to understand um github code i don't know what alpha code does but this is what i guess after reading this and my intuitively intuitively i will just build this uh, 99 percent of chance they are doing this i think they are doing this yeah okay so uh alpha code um they how they evaluate this is they evaluate that with 10 most recent um contests which are not in their are not in their tra training data because if those contests uh problems are already in their training data they basically the model just memorizing things right even just models memorizing like writing things at such extent still impressive and not to mention the model doesn't okay so uh they also released their code on github uh, this is pretty good uh, because it's a kind of a good setting a good example uh, you should always release your code uh, in the ai research Okay, so the problem is, uh, is uh, the, it's like this. Let's just see uh, competitive programming. So if you ever prepare for interview, like you do any lead coding, you 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 probably not a stranger for to this one. So um, the input it's a description for the problem, which is pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, let's just see one. The, the first line contains a single inter integer q blah blah blah, and then you need to after reading this description you need to solve it it's not easy i think it's uh, more difficult slightly more difficult than the uh than the code problems okay and uh, when you see the output uh it's, you see the input and you need to give the output and of course you don't just uh, calculate this in your mind it's almost impossible so you need to write a program to solve it then you probably can choose whatever languages you are familiar with and uh the model, the alpha code, need to solve this. So how it solves is you feed this to encoder, and uh, the decoder will program, It'll give you a program. And how you may ask, how can alpha code know this? Uh, the, it learns from the training data and uh, store this kind of knowledge concept in the weights of the neurons, just like what, you, what we do. Okay, so um, the, well, the problem is when you do a decoding, it's not it's not like a natural languages you can just decode word by word because programming languages are usually hierarchical, uh, complex. Uh, there's a lot of uh, certain way to lay out code. So it, I actually did this before. If I just uh, train the model, encode the decoder model, it's usually the the decoded results sometimes just don't make sense you have a lot of uh, nonsensical things so how they deal with that it's uh, very tricky that's uh, that's a techniques it's not like it's, you have training data you have uh, annotated data you train a model encoder decoder problem solved it's not like that it's a lot of a lot of problems can be solved like that but uh, some advanced problems like this it's not doable so that's why uh, those machine learning phds uh, skills comes in which the experts in deep mind the how to solve this kind of decoding this kind of details how you can make a decoder more efficient uh, that's a the valuable techniques that you should learn uh, if you want to be an air an AI expert okay okay so the first uh, alpha code reads two phrases this is kind of a complex i haven't really dig into because it's just published this morning okay i just published an hour ago so uh if uh, um this is really things i want to dig in i wonder if you really want to do this line of work you probably want to dig in but if not uh, let's just enjoy the 
the problem. So alpha, alpha core is presented with the problem and uh, in this case to figure out if it's possible to convert a one phrase to another uh, by pressing the big sp space instead of some later. Okay, I know. So these two phrases is not like a spatial architect architecture here. It's just the spatial for this problem. No wonder I don't understand. So um, alpha for I think it's just uh, still encode decoder things, uh, but they do some clustering uh, technique. So we were going to see. So it's not as complex as I thought, but it's still uh, complex. Okay. The problem is from code code forces. And the solution solution was generated by alpha four. Okay, so the problem is this problem. Alpha four generated these solutions. It's impressive. It's impressive. Uh, is this Python? Uh, I think it's Python, right? So it look pretty Pythonic. Okay. And uh, I I guess most people, if you never practice for competitive programming, you probably will have hard time solving this. I I didn't really read the the, the problem, but it probably take me a few uh, an, an hour or two to solve this one. Okay, so competitive programming is popular and challenging, and it's definitely popular because of a lot of people want to do lead coding. Uh, uh, I have a lot of friends that are preparing for Google interviews, uh, thank interviews, and they do kind of lead code um, two hours a day, and then kind of uh, they also participated in this uh, competitive programming. Okay. So this is from the the from uh, Coda Forces, which is a competitive programming site. Uh, he says uh, Alpha Four exceeded exceeded his uh, or her expectations, and uh, originally they were uh, skeptical about that. But now when they saw this kind of a competitive. Uh, Results they oh alpha code it's something actually I will be also be dubbed about it it's pretty pretty hard at least from my understanding and um, if you want to do AI to do that but DeepMind of course uh, DeepMind right so they they did this they showcase this and I guess there will be a lot more work around this in the future because the groundwork will be late okay so how they do that is uh, they they create the data right the data is a GitHub code this is for encoder decoder pre-training. Pre so you, you, you pre-train your decoder and you also, because you have a lot of GitHub code, GitHub code without problem solution, you have uh, maybe 2 billion GitHub report, but you don't have like the description for the problem, what this report solve, right? This is just a, maybe a description for a library, uh, the, the use case. So they just get a lot of GitHub code. This, not the problems and solutions, not the competitive programming problems. So they just let a decoder to pre-train. They just pre-train a decoder on that, so the decoder knows how to program. You just you just think decoder uh, doing the pre-training on GitHub, uh, GitHub code is just to train how the decoder's programming skills. And also in the uh, fine tuning, they have the problems and solutions that that encoders to see the problems and the uh, see the, the decoder to give the solution. So that's why we call fine tuning. And I guess that encoder is um, uh, uh, kind of pre-train bird or something. If I were then, I would probably pre-train the decoder on the, the, the problems as well, problem descriptions as well. Uh, there are definitely a lot more problems descriptions of uh, programming problems out there. And I would want to pre-train that as well, it's like fine tune. Okay. Then the fine tuning is I give you a problem, you give you a solution. It's a super supervised learning, and uh, the pre training is you can call self supervision or unsupervised learning, and then uh, during assembling and evolution, that's a tricky part. Large scale sampling, I don't know what that means, but that's the novelty from them. Uh, you should definitely read the paper, and uh, then the large set of potential solutions. So they will give uh, you Python solutions and maybe ten of different Python sol solutions and C plus plus. And then you, you do the filtering, the clustering. Uh, I don't know how, but this is how it works. But this is the kind of trickiest part in this paper. If you understand it, you, you get it. Okay, then select a small set of candidates and SQs and evaluate. The, the, the SQ, execution is like uh, maybe there's inbuilt com 
compilers in this in this alpha code so you will try to run if this actually workable or not so i can see this is extremely com computational intense okay so with the permission of uh, coder forces they evaluated the alpha code by um, simulating the yeah 10 latest uh, contest right so as expected, uh, this is just their progress. This is pretty interesting. Um, originally, they, they first used like multi-query attention. Yeah, something attentions in decoder decoder uh, loads. I think it's the loads to align coder and decoder. A mass language loads. So it's basically it's just mass language modeling, right? And nothing new. And the code normalization. I don't know what that means, but probably, probably made the code uh, more comprehensive. And clustering and after you do clustering the performance must jump assembling and improve the, the model performance of course because you have multiple models and you use the voting mechanisms to to say the most the solution got the most vote will be a solution and tampering i don't know what that means okay tech and the ratings probably they rank the solutions and value conditions conditioning a scale scaling up probably like just a launch thousands of in different models something like that uh, but i can see scaling up is a very important skills uh, but i don't know what that means so if you want to look into this paper probably pay more attention to clustering uh, tempering and the uh, renting uh, the solutions after this after this uh, point so there are four or five techniques you can learn uh, if you are interested and uh, scaling up definitely is a cool technique a human competitive Competitors estimations 34 34 accuracies. Top human competitors. You can see the top human competitors. It's very different from average human competitors. Okay, so it's that much difference. I don't even know that so much difference. Okay. So this is why you can see alpha code attention visualization. You can see uh, in different attention heads how how this model pays attention to the problems. I think. Okay. All right, so they also published their paper here, uh, competitive label code generation with alpha code. And as usual, so many different authors and uh, definitely those sources are genius, genius. And, uh, interesting, let's just see some beautiful graphs. Okay, very, very long paper, probably will take you uh, two, three days to read if you're really interested, but uh, if you are not doing, if you are not doing a PhD on this, you probably don't have to read it all. Uh, it's too tiring. In the past, I would probably I would read it all. I would spend a whole weekend to read it. But there are just so many things you can read. Oh, this is attention. I don't know. I don't know what the colors mean. Okay, so you can see there are. Uh, okay, so it's probably ten pages. Uh, 30 pages 30 pages okay so that's it that's it for today if you would like to receive more uh, ai related videos like this like explanation of the uh, latest ai works definitely are and don't forget to subscribe your subscription really means a lot to me and make it just gives me more um, encouragement to make more videos like these like today's video uh okay other than that enjoy the paper and uh, uh, 